Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to TRS Live with your hosts, Brian Keller, Matt Schrotz, and Zach Hoffman, presented by The Real Shot. I'ma do this here forever. EQ. Forever. Try it. Forever. Yeah. Forever. I'ma do this here forever. All you haters better get comfy This is the day you've been waiting on Your road is finna get bumpy It's yes. the dragon making my statement No, I ain't going nowhere no This the place that I'm making home I'll do this shit forever Hit the gas and I'm taking off Ow. I was born with passion My job is never ending And my hustle's everlasting No matter what, I'm gon' ball Even with my back to the wall And the best part is that this is the beginning I'ma do this here forever Forever. In a bay. All right, here we go. Man, we're live. We're live. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, cool, man. Again, like we're having some technical difficulties here at the Real Shot. If anybody yeah. hasn't seen or been in here since we've gone live 30 seconds ago, the wall is coming down at the Real Shot today. So the power got cut twice to this room in the last 10 minutes. Yep. There's no power up front right now. So if anybody wants to come see some, it's free fall right now yeah yep. just coming <laughs> the electricians didn't do a great <laughs> yeah. job of labeling uh the, that wall versus this room which is a long ways apart but apparently somehow it's, they're tied it's together like, so it's like california all over again just mm. come take whatever you want yeah. so prop 65 here we pro, go. <laughs> <laughs> we're in here today uh we g- we got um tj on the skype line he's ready to roll with us he's at uh he's in tennessee right now at the mlf and it's day day one right tj is he ready to go yep here we go yep can you see us now can you see us he won't he won't be able to see us right now this camera's not working okay well yeah so we got tj on the floor so literally it just wrapped up the day one of the MLF there at say the name of the lake, Lake Chickamauga. Chickamauga. No, we have we have not wrapped up the day. Oh, is is it still going? I thought it was over with now. Not till three thirty. Oh, oh. Wow. we got a lot of good stuff. Coming. Oh, so there, that's the twenty minute countdown was to the break. Yeah, so we have two hours. I'm looking at it right now. Two hours and twenty six minutes to go for the third in the third period. So they already is- started the third period now. They did just a couple minutes ago. And last we just we just looked at it, Jordan Lee and Aaron Martins were tied with 44 pounds. And what I thought was funny about that, if it's still current, is Lee has five more fish than what Aaron Martins does is the last I looked at it. Yep, that's still the same. Yeah, it was crazy. So I think what's going on is Lee is in the back bay drop shotting for, you know, these fish that are kind of moved up into the beds, and Aaron Martins is – Throwing to a rock point, catching some big pre-spawn females. So that's what it looks like to me. Yes. Cool. Exactly. So what's going on with you, buddy? Anything cool? Just uh, traveling. Uh, we got done with the the Raleigh, North Carolina event uh, a little over a week ago, um, where Jacob Prosnick won. Um, so yeah, um, just had the week off now. Now we're now we're here in Tennessee for stage four. So we're this is the halfway point. So when this term is done, we're now halfway through the first Bass Pro Tour season. So that's pretty exciting. That is pretty exciting. And I saw that they made the announcement that is it is it true the championship will be in lacrosse? Yes, it is. That is really exciting to me because man, we're two hours from my house. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's over the what is it the twenty first or the twenty fourth or something like that in lacrosse. That should be an awesome time. And you know, congrats to the lacrosse area for getting that over there. That. We'll have to make the drive over there and see TJ and check out all the guys fishing that one, too. Yeah, for sure. I'm just looking at yeah, the 23rd through the uh, 25th, it looks like. Uh, I'm looking at the press release right now so um, of August. Yep. Yep. So that, that should be pretty cool. But they haven't – so I've, if I was, I was checking earlier, they haven't announced what, like, the 5th and the 6th uh, rounds of the tour are set, but they haven't quite got, like, the ends of them all planned out yet besides the championship round. Would that be correct? Yeah, so uh, the fifth one is uh, on Smith Lake in Coleman, Alabama. And then the sixth one is Table Rock. And then the seventh one is actually on in, on Grand Lake. Okay. Uh, when the 2016 Classic was there, um, that's where that was at. And then the eighth one is the one that they don't 
have announced yet. So. That's the one, and that's just before the, the championship round. Yep, exactly. That's the end of June, actually, during my birthday. <laughs> oh, hey. nice. So you're going to have, yeah. have a couple of beverages while you're at that tournament. That would be for sure. Yeah, probably. Just, we'll, we'll, we'll probably make that happen. Just not Zach <laughs> yeah, style don't, beverages. Don't, don't do don't that. Don't have Bass Master Classic <laughs> don't beverages. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we will not have Zach <laughs> Mott beverages or Travis Manson. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, we haven't seen you since the Classic. I mean, you like you said, you've just been traveling like crazy. Uh, I was texting you the other day. You were back home, and you got to do a little property stuff. And so, you know, now you're, now you're what did you say? You're in North Carolina? Or no, now this is back in Tennessee. We're watching some of these guys. Are, are you, I mean, day one I know is still going on, but what are you hearing for conditions and everything right now? Well, I think from what I heard this morning, like the Fisher in all stages, um, as you've seen this morning on on the live, that some guys are actually catching fish off beds. Some are uh, kind of in that middle range, you know, catching them right on the edge of going up to beds. And then some are even off off yet in, uh, in even deeper water um, uh, catching fish. So it seems like they're in all stages right now. So um, it's kind of wide open as to what they what they how they want to fish and with what technique. Um, so yeah, it's it's a pretty cool time because uh, everyone kind of gets to do what they want to do when that's the case so it's it's a, a rarity that you're able to have it that wide open but it, it sounds like that's the way it is or it shows to be that that way right now on on live well i i was kind of catching up on the weather down there and it sounded like some rain pushed through yesterday but they said it wasn't a cold front style of rain so it didn't really affect water temperature if anything what it did is just affected um, visibility and what they were saying you know on live was it was like 12 to 20 you know, inches down is where the visibility was. So these guys are seeing a lot of these fish that are either, like you said, pushing up or on beds already. But it was weird to see, like, um, that Aaron Martins was catching a lot of big females. But then I was the last part I got to see Lee was, you know, he was saying he was catching a lot more males. So he's like, where the heck are the females? They should be right behind. Yeah. Yeah, they should be. Um, I think if the weather uh... – stays the way it is i have not checked the weather forecast uh, for the next couple of days but i i would say things are setting up pretty nicely if, if we can get some stable conditions and uh, we could see a lot of big fish this week i think well um, yeah there was a couple of, a couple of seven plus pounders caught already just in day one so that was that's pretty exciting to see it makes for good good television that's for sure or good internet vision whatever you want to call it <laughs> oh yeah yes absolutely um yeah lots of good fish already so and I some of the guys too are even throwing like um was it Lefebvre or whatever his name is he was Lefebvre. throwing yeah he was throwing I think a wake bait or a wake bait for a while this morning yep. and then um R Dean how do you pronounce his last name he was throwing his bait oh it's right here Rojas, Rojas. yep, yep. <laughs> yep. Dean Rojas. <laughs> he was throwing his pro frog too so but then a lot of the guys stopped they said the sun came out so the fish kind of started you know acting like fish finding the shade and everything like that so but yeah we yep. got a we got an assortment of baits here in front of us and after we you know let you go we'll kind of talk about more of this kind of stuff so so but, I got a real quick question if yeah. I can interject um so I know when we were down there for the bassmaster uh, classic the numbers seemed to be a little bit down people weren't really able to find themselves on the fish very well how would you say that the numbers are comparing uh, this weekend versus then? Um, well, from just the little bit of time we've had, it, I mean, the week's got to play out a little bit more, but I would say it's, it's pretty impressive. I mean, right now, let me pull it up again here. Um, it's like, gore tracker. yeah, I was just looking at that. I mean, we're looking at almost the entire first 40 of the field. So you got through 25th place. So. Over half the field right now has uh, uh, double-digit numbers of fish. Okay. That's wow. pretty solid. Yeah, that's very that's, solid. That's okay. really solid. So, uh, yeah, I'd say it's it's, it's showing up pretty well because uh, this body of water can be uh, rather fickle um, in the way of, of uh, fishing because weather can really dictate a lot on this body of water from my understanding. And, um, yeah, when it's good, it's good. So right. There's a handful of guys that have 20-plus fish. I mean, that's a there is. good James Elam, yeah. Mark Rose. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, that's 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 a lot of fish. Scott's got eighteen. I mean, that's that's a that's nineteen a, for Jordan Lee, yeah. nineteen for Lefebvre. Um Yeah, there, so, yeah. They said that if you could ever pick a weekend or a for a week for a tournament, 
that they hit conditions on this one just perfect. If the, if everything yep. like like TJ just said, if the weather stays consistent and everything like that, there's going to be some some big fish caught and a lot of fish caught because they're you know like like TJ said they're in all stages. So some of them fish are really protective or they're really really hungry right now. So what's still what's still the feel of the uh, you know of the whole series down there, guys? You know everybody's still loving it. Like the fan bases, are you seeing a lot more people come around? I mean we got a couple stages under the belt now, so. I, I think it's I think it's really awesome stuff. I mean, the Bassmaster Classic for myself was amazing. It was phenomenal. I mean, the way they organized that and everything like was just super cool. But you know, without that big weigh-in, how you know, is, is the MLF still still you know popular as it as it was a couple weeks ago? Oh, I, I think so. Um, you know, they they really have not got their their activation fine tuned yet on site here. So that's not been their major goal quite yet. It's it's really focused on on getting the tournament, um, getting everything running good, the tournament wise, and then the post game show. And then I think their ultimate goal is to slowly start to, to build an activation, uh, for the fans and whatnot. So, um, I think you're going to see, see a really good activation at table rock because obviously we're really super close to the home of, uh, Bass Pro shops there in Springfield. So, um, I'm sure Johnny will, will, will put on something, uh, a pretty good show there for him. Um, being that he's the, t- the title sponsor. So, right. um, yeah, I mean, it, it, everything seems to be going good. All the guys really, you know, from what I've I've heard, it's all been positive. They all they all love the format. Um, even Mark Rose was was saying today on 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 the broadcast, like how cool it is. You know, he, yes, he caught one off the bed. Yes, there's you know always controversy around catching fish off a of bed, but with this format, he's putting that fish right back so she can go do her deal, and they're not having to to transport that fish all over the all over the body of water before they go and weigh it in. So. Um, that's a huge plus uh, for for the overall conservation side of things. So I got I got two questions for you. I was noticing today, and, and uh, like I said, it's been a couple of weeks since I watched some of these. Is the signing of the card where the weight is that something new? Because it seemed like a lot of guys were f- still forgetting to do that. Uh, I'm not. I know they have to sign the card at the end of the day. I guess I wasn't. I guess I didn't know that they had to sign it uh, after each fish. So I don't know if that's new or if that's just that we we've not seen it or right. if, if they. Just maybe they do it after a few fish. I don't know, but I guess I hadn't noticed that before. Um, yeah, every every fish I've seen, everybody, you know, each guy was catching today. They were always like, uh, especially the Aaron Martins, because he was on quite a bit because he was on some big fish. But he was yeah. always kidding around with his, you know, his weigh guy saying, oh, I'll remember to do it this time. But every time they weigh a fish and he had an either initial or sign right next to the weight to make sure it was you know, yeah. the correct weight. So I just didn't know if that was something new that these guys weren't just still, or it's just so new yet for everybody. And then the other question I got is now I know there's a two minute penalty if the fish hits the deck, but if it falls off the scale, is it still a penalty? That I couldn't answer for you. Cause I honestly, I don't know, but <laughs> I would assume, I guess it would depend on who, who I, I really don't know. I mean, it, it could be, Stumped it could them. be on the angler that they didn't get that thing, you know, on there firmly. Right. But it also could be, you know, you know, could be part of the part of the overall process that maybe there there's leeway there. Right. You know, I, I don't know on that part of it. That one I that's, that's an interesting question. I, I don't know on that one. And I think the I think it would still be a penalty from kind of what I was watching today because as far as the the officials, what do they call them again in the boat, the referee or whatever the heck it is? Uh, I think it's just I think it's their official. Oh, the official. He yep, never so. he never touches the fish. All he does is holds the scale. Yep. And yep. then the angler has to, you know, pinch the, the lip and get it on the ways. So I think if it would fall off, it'd probably be a penalty. And it might be a very dumb question. It might be that simplistic, but it's I know gonna, it's gonna eventually gonna have to be brought to the table though. I mean Well, see and they use uh, very similar to the Berkeley ones like we have and it it clips, like it literally clips on the bottom of the lip or the top of the lip, however they hold it. So yep. uh, if I guess if it would just be their fault for not getting it on there well, but I just didn't wasn't I didn't know if you were aware of that because I mean you, it's a it's a bad thing when a fish hits the deck no matter what, but if you're trying to weigh that right. fish and then it really falls off, I mean, who yeah. else, you can't get you can't get mad at anybody else but yourself. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, and I'll find that out today. I, I can ask someone pretty easily on that. So um, yeah, I don't know though. So one thing that I thought was kind of interesting was the whole time we were at the Bassmaster Classic, um, Ike and Nelly had won the Summit Cup, and he couldn't really make that announcement until afterwards, right? 
Yeah, so that's being a, a made-for-TV only production. Um, they can't they can't talk about that at all until it's actually aired. So it's it's kept very quiet, and they've done a good job of keeping it quiet. So yeah, he <laughs> couldn't talk about it until after after the show aired that he had won. Right, and as, you know the, the whole time he's on stage, he's in the Big Six, you know. So he's hopefully winning the he's going for the classic, and he yep. and, and then I'll hold, he won the the first the, it was the first one right the first of the the series. Um, I I I can't keep up with all their names. I think it was a. <laughs> One of yeah, one of the cups. I, I really don't know. If to, here, I can pull it up. I've, well, I've yeah, it's not it. it's not that important. I was just you know that was I thought I thought that's what Brian was trying to tell me. It was the first one of the MLF. That's why it was, you know, it was a really cool deal for him to be there at the classic, fishing his last classic for you know a while, and then yeah. and then already had won as something you know as as significant as the Summit Cup there. So <clears throat> I got a yep. question. For, I guess more question comment TJ on the on the. Hook hook placement on the sp- uh, bed fishing or versus just your general angling cranking where yep. in the mouth you want can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, so when they're bed fishing, they have to uh, it's got to be hooked inside the mouth, and I think the official has to be able to see it or 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 be able to tell it as well if I re- if I recall right. Okay. Um, so yeah, they, they, yeah. When it's when they're sight fishing like that, they definitely have to have them hooked inside the mouth because that's a uh, that's a state law yep. um, in both states. So, yep. Hmm. And then any, and if they're just throwing a crank and that fish comes in hooked sideways, I mean, put it on the scale that counts. Yeah. Yep. As far as I know, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yep. It's only when they're, when they're, when they're bed fishing. Correct. Yeah. Cause I mean, just like any tournament, they have to follow all the rules of every state. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was just thinking about our own state law. You know, if you pull a fish in sideways, I mean, obviously you got to release that fish. Cause that to me is considered a foul hooked fish. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just wondering how the state differentiates that versus the state of Wisconsin. Seems this seems a little odd, you know. Right. Um, but being that the fish are all released anyway, it's it's really a non-issue. Just more of a kind of an interesting well, topic. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's that's a really good question as well. I mean, we're stumping TJ today. That's why we have him on. <laughs> yeah. <we're> <laughs> <laughs> Now I know your real reason. Is yeah. yeah. <laughs> we Just, have no answers. Well, that's not 100% true because, I mean, uh, we we know that with the, without getting to talk to you at the Classic, we would have been lost puppies. <laughs> I mean, for sure. Like That's for sure. And the, the, we, well, we know Zach was worthless. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. no doubt there. And you know, and I I just like to you know commend you because like there was people going out of their way to find TJ and talk to him. He I mean he'll oh he'll play it down, but he's the man. Kind of a big deal. He's kind of a big deal. He has many leather bomb books, and oh. you know he's he's got he's that kind of dude. But Good. yeah, there was it was really cool to watch. I mean, you've been doing it for how long again? So I've been I've been to every classic since 2010. So I guess what is that? Ten of them. Holy man. Wow. So yeah. every classic, and then um, he knows his way around. Every, he's got the hookups. If you're... every elite series event since 2011, so um, so I think that's what eight years, eight full years. Wow, yeah, he... nine years, yeah. Yeah, I suppose you you rub a few elbows when you're at that many. Right? He'll, he'll try he'll try to play it down, but he is the people seek him out. If they need advice, where's TJ? That's what they, yeah. that's yeah. what they say. <laughs> <laughs> So what's up for the rest of today now? I mean, I know they're still fishing. What are your plans? What do you got to kind of do? Just sit in your uh, hotel room and wait for the fishing to be over with? No, I'm actually at the, my Airbnb house this week. Uh, my business partner I have, and man, it, it's, a, it's a nice house we got here. So, uh, no, I'm actually, uh, as soon as this is done, I'm going to meet Kevin Van Dam to shoot some videos with him. So on some mustad hooks. And Ooh, wow, yeah. so, See, there it uh, is. I mean, he's nonchalantly yeah. telling us he's the man. Are you gonna no, get the no. you, you gonna get the fish at all while you're down there? I I seen you were up in De Pere not too long ago. Yeah, I, I, possibly I might I might go to Watts Bar, which is um, I think it's just up from Chickamauga, up or down, I forget which one it is. Um, I don't know I don't know the, the the Tennessee River very well and how the the lakes lay out, but uh, I think I think it's below this. So um, I was gonna possibly go out there with Edwin uh, on Thursday shoot some video so I'm, maybe I'll get to take a cast or two but um, usually I don't uh, I'm pretty focused on work when I'm at these events I just you start mixing play and work at the same time yep. and then 
then things can get go sideways. So I try to focus on what's got to get done. You it end was, up doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> It'll, it'll, exactly. Right. Right. He, yeah. What you guys, what you guys don't know is uh, Brian's gonna pay for this somewhere. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. No. He hasn't come around yet, so I hope he's watching right now. Yeah. He. I'm some, sure he is. He's just about to school. He's got to get on a bus. I don't know where he's traveling to today, but he's got baseball games all over the state. So trying to get him in okay. while the weather is still good, but. Um, uh, so yeah, tell us about Tapir. I mean, I I know it's a little off topic from talking uh, the bass fishing, yeah. but how how'd that go for you? Yeah, so that's one of my favorite places to fish this time of year. Like I I can't ever get enough of it because uh, the whole vertical jigging thing. I mean, uh, there to me there just is not a more fun way to catch fish when you can cast or vertical jig for anything. But uh, um, especially when the walleye that run is on, because I mean all those big fish out in Green Bay coming up that river so your odds are about as good as any in any during any time of the year to catch a big fish so uh, and you can usually catch you know a lot of fish you know i've had 100 fish days there yep um, you know it's just it's just a lot of fun and and the fact that all of them have to be released pretty much other than fish you, you know person can take one over 28 but you right. know that doesn't just happen every time you go there so pretty much everything gets released which is really cool you know so um, that is just that, as you guys know, getting out in the boat for that first time, you know, it's really exciting to, 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 to get out of the house and now you're in the boat and it's like, finally, yep. so, get, um, get a couple hook sets on your belt and move on from yeah. there. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it a little later on, but Zach and I got lucky enough. We got out with the DNR yesterday and did a little, uh, shocking yep. on the Wolf river. So that was, that was a really cool event. I so, mean, so speaking of that is, is Winnebago now completely unthawed yet or no? Yep. I believe so. Yeah, we talked to um, oh, Zach. Help me out. What's his name? Uh, from Sunken Dive. Is his name Dan? No. Oh, um, he's gonna be mad at me for not thinking. But anyways, oh, dude. I'll get it. You just it'll come. Anyways, yeah. he said there's one. There's like one bigger piece kind of floating out in the middle. But for the most part, yeah, Bagel's all the way open. It, awesome. Awesome. But I, and I, who was telling me? Somebody was telling me that the the bites good out there right now is that that yeah so i had a friend there i think on sunday sunday or yesterday but he they got uh, a two-man limit so i think they had 10 walleyes um and they were they were using uh uh uh, plastics it was actually the deal that was catch majority of fish for him so i think right there in oshkosh yeah a lot of guys are getting them coming in and out of the mouth yeah there's always a good bite in that in that river channel there and then obviously the wolf itself and up at eureka i mean there's just there's little pockets of great walleye fishing all over this area this right. time of year yep and zach Absolutely. zach's been doing some decent fishing from shore so it, it's like you said dude the weather's just got to cooperate for us here as well like it is down it has to down there but it's spring's here we just we yeah. gotta, fish are always there weather. don't don't come home tj i don't know if you know but we're <laughs> supposed to get like a zero to 30 inches of snow in the next two days Zero to forty. Well, I, I, I did. I did see that. So I'm just hoping uh, from the weather. Hopefully, it'll just be all gone by the time I'm, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shoveling any of it. No, not. let it all. I'm hoping not to. Yeah, I'm exactly. We'll just let it all melt. So do you? Did, I forgot to. Or did, I forget. Did you? Are you moving right from this tournament to the next tournament? Or you said you have a week off in between. No. So I've got a couple of weeks off from there. Um, the next one is like the 29th or the 28th of april through the first weekend in in may so um I'll, i will be home um because i've got a turkey tag i got the first week of turkey season that a boy uh, so i'm excited for that uh, uh so yeah that's going on and then i'm hoping to still get out and get, do a little more shed hunting hopefully with that snow we'll keep the the uh, spring green up pushed back a little bit because uh, i am not ready for for the green up to come you know there's as you know, there's too much in the woods. I'd like to be, be able to look and see. I mean, right. this is the time of the year where you can see all that sign from last fall. Yep. Uh, there's just no better time. And, man, I just – I love being out there. It's just this is a, the busiest – you know, one of the busier times <laughs> of the year, as you guys know, especially with, with the, the shop, you know. So, yep. uh, you know, hoping to get more – you know, uh, get out and do a little more scouting yet and uh, hopefully maybe find a shed or two uh, as well. You know, I found a couple last weekend um, – uh, there on on my farm and then uh, actually was in kansas at my lease down there and we found five sheds last week there and got a lot we got four plots uh top seated and um uh got a couple stands hung and then a couple, we can put mineral out down there busy man I yeah mean, it, it is it's, 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 when do you have time for all this right. stuff? 
I went from I drove uh, from Raleigh on Sunday night of last week. Drove from Raleigh, drove to Chattanooga, parked the car at Chattanooga Airport, and drove and flew from Chattanooga to Kansas City, where my good friend um, met me at the airport in Kansas City. Jumped in the truck with him, went out to our lease on Monday night, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, we scouted all day, hung stands, <laughs> drove home on Thursday. <laughs> Had three days off, and then I flew out yesterday morning at six forty. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that's doable. I mean, <laughs> you get a little exercise in there, you know, the walking. That's always fun. And How come, do you ever turkey hunt Kansas? Um, I have not. No, I just turkey hunting's fun, but it's not deer hunting. Uh, you know, I hear you. That's the passion, and usually this is such a busy time of the year that right. you know, heck, the last three year, last year I had the first week. And it literally, I had everything lined up. I had birds lined up and everything was going perfect. I thought, man, this is going to be game over the first day. Yep. Well, then we had that monster snowstorm hit oh. two days prior. And that ended, I didn't even go out. I said, I'm not, I'm not even bothering with it. So no. I didn't even go um, the first week. So uh, didn't even turkey hunt last year. Um, I think the year before I drew and I don't, I think I had a tournament again or something going on. Didn't end up going. Um, so between scouting, between uh, open water fishing, um, work, being on the road, uh, turkey hunting is really put on the back burner. So when I get a chance, great. If not, right, you know. But I haven't, I haven't shot one in a few years. So um, hoping, hoping to change that this year. Yeah. Well, there you go. You said we should try to meet up. Let's meet up for first season. Let's get some. Let's get a Tommy two, three toes yeah, shot. Yeah, Matt, and, you're a turkey. We'll go. We'll go from junkie. turkey hunting. To, we'll hop in. We'll go to the wolf. So you, and, yeah. Did, did, did you draw first week? I did not. I, I slacked this year. I didn't apply, so I just bought third season when it came over, left over. But it, it's always it's always such a gamble on those early seasons. Yeah. I mean, you can hit it just about perfect, or it, you get another 12 to 15 inches of snow. I mean, it, you can still kill turkeys in that kind of weather. It's just like you said. Oh, yeah. Last year, my daughter actually was hunting. Or no, it was a youth hunt, and we got all that snow, and it was just a bear. We went out and pulled the blind so it didn't blow yeah. away, and it was... Should have yeah. just put snowshoes. I'm worried about the robins again this year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think you know we, many, you I, know I was many? I was like, hey Jess, do you think we should stock up on crawlers at the <laughs> shop just in case? You know, wait, those robins. So that that's funny. So TJ, last year we sold I don't know how many dozens of worms and thirty counts of leaf worms. Remember when the robin crisis was happening? People were trying yeah. to feed their robins. It was nuts. It was absolutely crazy. Well, it's almost exact timing from last year. This just big dump and right. You know, they're all up here In trying April. to. Yeah. Yeah. So man, so well. So, uh, so what? What zone did you end up getting for I, your tag? Then? I got. I got three. Is that Wapaka Port? That that big area, right? Yeah, that's zone three is one of the bigger areas. So you, okay. I, where you're located, I don't know exactly where you sit in, you know, in that zone three, but you might be on the, I don't know if you're zone three or if you're on the verge of zone two. I, I'm pretty sure I'm in zone three. That's yeah. all part of that. Cause you're Wapaka Shawano County, right by you. Yep. Correct. See, and we talked Brian into the promised land this year. So he said we have full access to go out to his place and shoot as many turkeys as we want as we had tags for wink, wink. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I, I'm just going to say you, I, I would give you full access on mine too. So. Oh yeah, Zach. Well, I'm not far from you, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, in zo I'm in zone three in Shano myself. What's that? I'm literally five minutes from Brian. Oh, nice. Place. Well, I think Justin, in order for you to gain access, you have to put in a big. What did you say? A big strike king order. <laughs> <laughs> Done. That's an easy one. That's an easy oh. one. Jeez, that means Justin's gonna get out there before <laughs> no, us. No, you. I one, one tag is enough. We'll see if we can fill that. So, and, and that's. I know we're. I I put I. So what I did is I put a Facebook post out linking it to TRS Outdoors so people can watch us, and I put a comment in there. How long do you think it's before I'm gonna? Talk tur talk hunting, and it did take long. What did we talk for ten minutes about bass yeah, fishing? Yeah. <laughs> and I was mumbling and stuttering. I'm like, I don't. Yeah, it's cool. Let's just watch it. Let's let's talk hunting. <laughs> now <laughs> we're in the right world. But uh, yeah. So what we're actually going to do is Zach and I are going to film film a little segment with that, and um, we're going to use a 410 this year. So that should be pretty interesting. So we're going to cite yeah. that bad boy in and go through all the fun work with that. But. Uh, Nice. So, anyways, I mean, I don't know what the leaderboard looks like right now, but, it, I mean, it should be a good week. So, if anybody hasn't watched the MLF this, you know, in the last couple of weeks, this is probably going to be one you don't want to miss. Now, if I'm not mistaken, your boy Edwin is in the lead, correct? Uh, 
in the angle of the year race or whatever. Yeah, for the points. Uh, yep, he is. He, yeah, I mean, he's had a first, a second, and a fourth. So he's he's only what five points total that he's not been able to get this year. Wow, so that's uh, pretty incredible. Um, no, I didn't see his name. Is he start. fishing day one or is he on? Is no, he in so Group he, B? He, he, he was uh, Group A for the last tournament. So they after each two tournaments they 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 mix up the groups again. So the first two um, were done, and then they flop they 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 recreated the groups again for before the last tournament. Yep. So he was in Group A, so now he's Group B this week. So uh, and then then after this tournament they'll flip them around again. They'll draw I don't know however they draw them out and just to reorganize them again. Yep. And then that will be for the next two tournaments and so on. So um, each two of these tournaments, you know the top. 20 or 30 are qualifying for one of those cups, you know, so there's four cups and they're broken down, you know, two tournaments to qualify, two tournaments, two tournaments and two tournaments. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's how it's working. So yeah, he's off today. Kevin's off today. Um, so yeah. Looks like Martin's just snuck into the lead. Oh it, yeah. 48. Yeah, yeah. I see that. Yep. Holy man. <laughs> those dudes are, they're just, it'd be interesting what happens tomorrow for those guys fishing tomorrow. You know, do you think do you think they see this kind of stuff, and do you think they try kind of the same techniques, or do you go in it confident, knowing what you scouted, and you're gonna you're gonna fish your way first, and maybe go on somebody else? I, I mean, is, do you think they they pay attention to the, everything that's happening today? Uh, who the the, the, the anglers the, the the next group that fishes tomorrow? So the only thing I think they can look at they're they're supposed to they're only thing they're supposed to be or able to look at is is the leaderboard oh. so they're, they can't go and look at anything because in the way of uh um looking at different spots and identifying what guys were catching them and and then uh you know the baits they might be using so they're not supposed to look at any social media for the most part at all <laughs> well i mean up. you think about that it's it's only fair it, yeah it's live yep. you could see what where how for the for the you know most part i mean that would yep. not <laughs> it would be great if you're struggling, man. Yeah. All right. That's, yeah. that's interesting. I, I wasn't aware of that. I mean, how do you, how do you, how is that regulated? It's on an honor system. And then, you know, the mo- mo- majority of these tournaments at this, this size or this caliber, um, they do do random uh, polygraph tests. So, um, oh. each, each, each time that, you know, they could be drawn for a polygraph. So, yep. yeah. So that, that, that also is, is uh, in the back of their mind. So, yeah, keep, keeping that uh, honor system and, and making sure they're following the rules. So, um, Man, yeah. Polygraphing fishermen, I mean, that's that's a whole can of worms in itself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was Justin really on his couch yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Where were you fishing? Yeah, I was south, uh, west, north yeah. Did those beers really uh, make you drink themselves? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they were, they, they were talking to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's phenomenal all right man well we appreciate you making time for us uh, and, and always and when you're back in town send me a text message i still i i haven't put any boots to the ground yet looking for shed so if the weather yeah. cooperates maybe we'll meet up and either get some fishing done or get some turkey scouting done or something fun like that so yeah i did see some tracks the other day on my place so um yeah we can definitely do that and uh one of these days, we we'll to have to start talking about food plot stuff. It's time, brother. You should if you like you already overseeded Kansas. You can oversee it right now. It would be a great time with that Absolutely. snow coming up. Absolutely, it would be. But yeah, I'm not going to be there to do it. So <laughs> send me GPS, be- send me GPS coordinates yeah, yeah. and what you want for clovers. I'll go up there and get her did. Get her did. <laughs> so. uh, if, if you're up for it, have at it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks right. much as always, and we'll keep in touch with you and uh, have a great rest of your uh, week. And we'll talk to you soon. Right. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Yep. See you, man. Yep. All right, bye. Bye, bye. All right, cool. It's always good catching up with him. He's a busy man. He's got. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Yeah, that would. I'm sure it's it's fun. I'm sure he's having a blast, but he's working hard and he's working hard. Yeah, absolutely. And he and he is. He's no he's no joke. When he's at these things, he's 100 percent biz. Oh yeah, 100 percent biz. 110 percent biz. Because. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't say it while he was on there, and he's probably still watching this yet. But the first day we saw him, you know, I, that's my first time ever face to face meeting him, besides you know through the Skype. And we're in a, the media room, and I go, "Hey, TJ, what's up?" And he looks at me, he's like, "Shut up, shut your mouth." <laughs> <laughs> and I look around, and there's people like talking louder than I was. I'm like, "What is there like a rule?" Like he's like, "No, dude, just 
just calm down. <laughs> I'm like, TJ, I you? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you kind of need to calm down a little bit. <laughs> but, yeah, there was – He's like, no, just, just, oh, cool. But he is because he is the man. I think people, he didn't want to, until he felt us all, he didn't really want to. Yeah, don't draw attention. Don't, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. He's like, I don't really think I should be affiliated with you guys quite yet until yeah. people understand that you're not just a bunch of hoodlums running around this joint. Well, <laughs> I mean, you made it. You made he's it he's not test, wrong. So. He's not wrong. So, we Justin, a couple goofballs. We got a pile of baits in front of us. And I know we kind of want to talk about – it's a little early for us, but let's talk about what these tactics are we're seeing. So, you know, we we hit on it briefly. There's some guys drop shot, and there's guys, you know, throwing swim baits, chatter baits, all that kind of stuff. So you – I asked you to go ahead and pick out some tackle that you would identify to how their conditions are right now. Yep, we grabbed an assortment, and we – although we're not – and what I mean by that is down in Tennessee. Yep, so when, yep. it, when our water temps hit that high 60 range and our fish start moving up, you know, what is Justin Munt, when he's bass fishing, what are some of the things you're going to grab and throw? Um. Well, let's see. That's the tough part. We have such a huge assortment. I don't even know what to oh. pick. But we can oh. we can at least we can at least touch on some of the some of the techniques that they're they're using down there. Yep. Um. So I heard. Uh, the w- wacky rigging, yep. uh, stick bait, weighted stick bait, Senko. Um, I grabbed the Z-Man, the Zinkers. That's a version. You want to be the, the yeah, holder? Yeah, I could be Vanna. Zach, yep. does, do we have this one going? Yep. Yep. You can just trust me. I, hey, man, I trust you. Yeah, I you. trust you. So here, <laughs> hold, so, so hold that is, one up. So that one's rigged. This um, is a Z-Man? That is a Z-Man Zinker. Yep, so they took the Elastec. They added a lot of salt to get it weighted so it gets down a little bit. If anybody's ever fished that Z-Man stuff, it – you know, it's extremely durable, but it, it wants to float, it, it, and which is great in a lot of applications. Yep. But obviously, if you want your bait to get down, you want to, you know, your Senko, which is a really awesome technique. Um, yep. Yeah, you, you, want it to, you want it to get down. So uh, I put a wacky ring on it. It's just a, it's a, there's a lot of companies that make these. It really just extends the life of your bait. Yep. You know, if you, if you directly hook that um, one or two fish, maybe, um, what the ring does, it just gives you a, a place to, to – put your hook it's almost like a, a keeper you're gonna you're gonna get you know 10 times the amount of fish per bait as you will get uh without the ring so well and so like even on the z-man plastics how strong they are are you do you you still would throw a ring on there no matter what i i would i mean some some of these yeah uh, you know it, it allows you to do or it allows you to uh leave your hook a little more exposed too so it increases the gap instead of punching it right through the body of the bait um, it exposes that hook a little more, so your hook percentage should go, does, should go up a little bit. Does this style as, as well increase action a little bit more, or do you, is it about the same? It's probably pretty close to the same. Um, and obviously, you, get, you know, Yamamoto, Yum, um, we have a dozen different stick bait body styles. Yep. Strike King Zero. Um, so the one guy, I can't remember uh, – what his name was, but he said he was weighting it. So was he taking a, a screw in weight to the front of it? Do you think? Yep, Nico Nico style, I guess is the the term they use. So it's either a screw in weight or it's a punch weight. You push the weight into the bottom. There's a lot of specialty hooks. It's a little longer shank hook. Um, instead of the you know the wacky rig fall, and you could Texas rig a Cinco too, which was one of the original ways it was fished. Right. Um, but yeah, it just it it points that bait nose down. And then in in the, and then it kind of keeps that bait off the ground a little bit elevated, so it gives them a little bit uh, easier target to pick it up. Well, kind of like what we talked about with your walleye segment too, is like it keeps the hook in the in the strike zone a lot more, yep. rather than it sitting down flat on the bottom. Yep. So, I mean, what do you? Th- okay, so these guys are pulling up to a lake. You know, they have obviously they got to pre-fish it, but what do you? I mean, what when the fish are all over like they seem to be now? How? What are you besides physically seeing them? What are they? What do you think they're keying on first to make them go to? All right, so these fish are holding off. You're using electronics, so then they're gonna throw like a chatter bait, kind of like a search bait. So like TJ was touching on that, it's kind of a unique situation. It allows all the anglers to kind of play to their strengths, right? So if you're a, if you're a sw- swim bait, spinner bait, chatter bait type guy. You can fish that if you're a bed fisherman, if you pr- prefer to do that, or if you prefer to drop shot. You know, everybody can really just play to their strengths. So right. being f- there's fish in all stages of the spawn, 
um, just finding the right fish in the right area of the lake. You know, obviously the lake's going to warm up differently in certain areas. So you're going to have fish moving up. You're going to have fish on beds. You're going to have fish staging. A, a fish on a bed, though, is it going to attack a top water lure? Um, yeah. They, they, I mean, they're just. The wa- so does the water have to be shallow enough for that to happen where it's getting close? Or if it's like three feet or less or, or, or deeper, they're, you're not going to fish a top water in that circumstance anyways, right? I mean, depending on water clarity, you can fish a top water in a, in a variety of depths. It's it's more just trying to find the mood of the fish, I think. Yep. And, um, and I've always and just assumed that top water was kind of a, a later on in the year when they're back out to the you know uh, feeding more consistently than worry about the spawn. I would say generally it's it's more of a summer type pattern. It's at, at least that's how it's viewed. You know, frog, slop, weedless. That's kind of how everybody views them. But there's applications uh, all times of year for top water. Hmm. So. So why we have Justin in here? He's, yeah. the, he's the man. Jack he of is. all trades. Jack of all trades. Master of none. Master of a couple, I hope. <laughs> I'm trying anyway. <laughs> and then, um, so like we said, uh, that Aaron Martins was throwing a, a, a chatterbait. I think I don't think he was trailing his though. You typically don't trailer these because that affects the action. No, actually, a lot of guys will trailer a chatterbait. Um, we brought in. I brought in two of the more popular. Um, Chatterbait swim bait trailers, actually they're right in front of you. Yamamoto Zeko. That one last year was probably our number one selling uh, chatterbait swim bait trailer. Uh, it's a pretty unique body style. I also grabbed um, right there, Live Magic Shad, Lake Forks. Similar bait. Um, yeah, just a great tra- great trailer, just a little th- th- little different action. Um, and you can use you know swim baits as a trailer. Uh, there's a variety of things, or or not, you know, you can not add a trailer at all. So there's a there's a lot of ways, you know. There's not one right or wrong. It's right. Well, it's fishing. Long story short, I mean, if guys are anxious right now watching these dudes pounding fish in Tennessee and they want to come buy baits, where you, this is just an example of how fully stocked we are, and it's continuing to get stocked every single day. I. <sighs> I'm going to try to estimate the running feet of bass plastic we have. I have 42 feet in the back that we are going to put out once the wall comes down. It's coming down. Yeah, and it's coming down today, so there's going to be additional 42 on top of, man, there's there's at least 100 running feet of plastic. Strike King, Mega Bass, Kitek, Yum, Jackal, I mean, all of it. We added some... Uh, Euro tackles got some pretty cool body styles, and a lot of our viewers are used to the Z Viber, yep. which was a really hot trending um, ice uh, lipless crankbait. We have it in larger sizes for the open water, in addition to a huge variety of their their plastics. So they're pretty neat. They're cool to check out. It it gets actually overwhelming the amount of different plastic, similar body styles, and different brands. It's uh, we're just trying to offer something for everyone. Right. So. Right. And that's and that's the thing. Like we almost have to go through and do product training almost weekly now because there's so much stuff going through. And that's going to be cool. I was amazed at how how open the store looked already with just half the wall gone. Yeah, I'm pretty excited right. about it actually. Yeah, it looks it looks cool. So if anybody's in the area and they want to see the construction now, mind you, I mean there's going to be some headaches with the construction. You know, the guys are doing a great job of keeping the store clean. They have huge tarps up, so you really can't see it. You know, drop cloths. But the range is going to be closed starting tomorrow, uh, on and off until about one thirty. Okay. So, because they're coming in, they're working early, they're getting here way before the store opens, everything like that. We'll do a couple posts on that, but just in case, you know. Um, the plan is to get it done this week. To, I have no doubts so of yep. it done this week. So we should be hopefully by the weekend done, reorganized, everything reset. Um, and then the archery room is almost done. Archery room is almost complete. Yeah, Eggert's in there uh, getting everything organized. Working hard. It's looking it, really nice. Um, it's cool. I know. I know. A lot of the staff was kind of waiting for the wall to come down, and now that it's happening, it just it just changes the whole entire store. Yeah, it's complete opposite the rest of the country. You know, they want the wall to go up, and we're trying. <laughs> to we're, we're taking walls down. Hey, here we go. <laughs> we're taking walls down. So. Well, what I want to talk about this now. So Zach and I got lucky yesterday, and we like we talked about, we went with the DNR, and we got lucky, and we, those guys were phenomenal. I mean, they were cool. Uh, Don Herman, there it is. There Don, it is. I was there, already moved past it, but yeah, that's, that's sorry. I, he be that, that guy is so cool. He'd be mad if I forgot his name right now. But anyway, so we got lucky. I I went up and I introduced myself to the guys and. 
You know, right away, Don's like, I know who the heck you are. I'm like, oh, Donnie, what's up, big guy? But we got lucky enough, and we went out shocking, and Zach's going to put together a video. But yep. the reason I want to talk about this is you put a post out there yesterday. Right. And we got a couple of negative comments on the post. Yep. And so... <sighs> Hmm. hmm. How do we want to attack this? How do this we one? want to attack this? I mean, so what the the long story short was is I had no clue about how the whole shocking process happened. Right. And the netting process that happens as well. Right. Yeah. So I'll just I'll just say first and foremost, we personally did not kill or injure any fish. Yeah, surprisingly enough, like cuz it it does happen in the process once in a while. Yep. We didn't have a single fatality or mortality, whatever you want to call it. Uh, which was awesome. I was. We were all proud of that. Uh, even the DNR made remarks about that. We were proud of that. Oh, and it's and it's not the goal. Like we like no. we talked about it briefly. I mean, the thing about it is these guys are out there to get as many fish, and not as fast, but as as efficient. Right. And get those. And it's kind of like the the MLF format, right? Yep. Catch it, get it in, and get it in the boat. Don't do let what it you hit the do. floor. Don't let it hit the floor. Oh, right. it's a two minute so, penalty. Yeah. Do you guys get? penalized if a fish hits the floor do you not are you not allowed to dip for well, uh, to, yeah <laughs> you're, yeah you're not yeah, yeah okay you're not allowed okay to. first of all you have to get good at it in order to do it but so there was a fish that appeared to be you know aggressively thrown into the aerated tank and, yep. it, and it wasn't i mean if anybody if you want i'm sure you can contact the dnr and they would pr they're looking for volunteers at times right yep. but you gotta also remember that this is a study and they're trying yep. to get it done because they, they pretty much told us yesterday that that was going to be almost one of the last days they are going to be back in that marsh. Right. Because we had so many f big females that are ready to drop eggs that they're like, well, we don't want to. And that's all how cautious they are with this stuff. Like, we don't want to disturb it any more than we have right. to. We're getting in. We're taking our fish. We're getting our data. And we're out of there. Right. So we, those people, they, I mean, you get it. On all walks in life. But we didn't kill any fish. We didn't hurt any fish. Right. I mean, you, you think the the tagging and the and the and the research of DNR they're not as gentle as one would think they would be with this. You know, they're not. There's zero intent to harm the fish, but nope. at the same time, you're processing. I don't. How many hundreds of fish did you guys process yesterday? I would say we probably uh, we, did. it was probably around two two hundred. Yeah, solid 200 and we fish. were only out there for an hour. Well, we were out there for two and a half hours, but well. Yeah, <laughs> it was a lot longer I mean, than you think, but it we, seemed we were like out it. there. We did three runs, three runs, so yep. take, take about 200 divided by three. That's how many fish we got each run. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was it was a cool experience for everybody. I think, you know, for me, it was a really cool experience because, you know, you don't – you never – most people never get to see that kind of action up close and personal, you know, of yep. what it takes to be able to research fish. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. I don't even know where to go with this. Well, no, it's just it's neat. I mean, you get to see what the what the potential of the system has right. by going with the DNR and and, yep. and you know, and we and we purely did it just for the you know informative piece that you're going to put together with it. Yep. And the the point I wanted to try to make is it's not easy netting these fish. It's not like the boat is right. stopped and these fish float up. When we when we look at the video, I will, I want to explain that when you are standing on the bow of a big flat bottom boat on a deck specially built for this purpose to a not try to get electrocuted yourself but b to be able to then have to reach eight feet or six feet down into the water with a 10 foot pole yep. while we're electrocuting you know the water <laughs> it's not an easy task first of all and then you think of you have a net with you know uh, a five six seven pound fish or three five six seven pound fish fighting the current trying to get it up in yep. and then you have to get them from the water to the other water as quickly and efficiently as possible it's not easy right. well and they're not shutting the you know electricity off so no, the, the idea is off. to get that fish from in in the bucket as fast as possible Fat, yep so that you're not missing additional fish that are rising to the surface so correct i mean let's people get, get a little oversensitive sometimes yeah. i'm a huge catch and release guy it's, it's tough. You see, you see anglers who who s specialize in certain species take amazing care of the species that they 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 like, right? Yep. But when it comes to other species, they're just like, you know, they're just chucking them. Right. Well, how can you? How can you dog somebody else? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. You're, you're it's such a fun topic to discuss. <laughs> 
<laughs> it, well, I mean, because it's, it's like treading, treading on, you know, thin ice, you know, because, you know, you don't want to upset anybody. But at the same time, so I my, mean, my question would be to so those and it, you could you could ask a bass fisherman the same thing for walleye. And you could ask a walleye fisherman the same thing for bass. Yeah, you catch your you're a walleye fisherman. You catch your beautiful walleye and you slightly let it go. Yep. You catch a bass, you're probably just chucking that thing, yep. right? Yep. And the same yep. and, and, and the, the same, same guys are throwing sheephead off their engines or, or cut, <laughs> right. cutting their throats. Like Bouncing them off rocks. And I, I get that off. they're a nuisance species, but... They're fish, too. Yeah. All right. they, fish, fish, fish lives, lives matter. matter. Yeah. There it is. That's, that's the new hashtag so right there. I guess the only reason <laughs> I wanted to bring it up is because we're, cool, we're doing a cool video with it. Yep. And this video is going to release yet this week, right? Maybe? Yes? Yeah, yeah for yep. sure. For sure. And it, uh, we didn't harm these fish. like. No. It, but I also want to tell you that it's not easy work either. Yep. And I give these guys a lot of credit because they're out there. We were only out there so we're like two hours. Yep. They go for four to six hour stretches. Right. And, and I think the day before, he said they got over 400 fish. Right. And it, the boat is going at one point something miles per hour, and they even picked on us about it because, like, we, they both were nice of us to let us Zach and I go. Yep. And I I probably missed a dozen fish to start the game off, and then you figure it out. Did it feel like bow fishing? Uh, in a in a in a kind of weird way. And it, uh, obviously, we weren't shooting the no. fish; we were netting them. No. But it, it literally, you're you're going, and the water was so clear, you could kind of see some of the fish in front of you. But you, the, all of a sudden, boom! There's a fish. You have to work, and you usually work with the current. And anybody that's done this can you know attest to this. But you work with the current, and by the time you net that fish, it's already be behind you if yep. you get it at the right time. And then now, like Zach said, you have to take this net and spin and turn in one motion and get that fish into the water as fast and as quickly as you can. Because typically when you turn, there's another one right there. And like Zach said, too, there's usually – we hit it a couple times where he had a better run than what I did. I netted three fish at one time. I flew nah, high yeah, and mighty. Yeah. Him and Eric – Right, Eric, that was his name I that you so, were yeah. with. They had like two or three runs where they each had three fish in a net. I think I had a, I think I had a four one at one point. Yeah, I looked back at the footage. I was like, four. not trying to brag. I'm just saying. But also, when you're trying to get when you hit a pod like that, there's if if you're not netting the fish, then you're basically shocking them for no reason. Yeah, you know. So right. you gotta if there's if there's four fish there, do your best to get all four and get them into the boat. Which I mean, we could talk about this for for hours Bro. but i mean at the end of the day i mean it's work that has to be done and you know what the research that they're doing for for that 20 seconds that that fish may or may not be a little yep. stressed out they're doing all the research in the world to make your fishing more successful yep and, you and know, we witnessed what do we witness uh like at least 2500 dollars going into the water in those pink tags those pink yeah, hundred dollar tags was, yeah uh at least so i mean that's there's that's, we watched you know, at least it's legit. There's there's pig tags in that. We watched them do it. We have it filmed. Right. I'll I'll just say this: when when that fisherman who's upset about shocking and all that stuff, or or thinks that fish are being mishandled, pulls out that per, that red or pink tag and gets to go cash in a hundred dollar bill, or maybe even two of them if you're you, a really you lucky think guy. Zach and I. I really think that you'll rethink the <laughs> all of your opinions that you just had. You'll rethink after you got an extra hundred dollars in your pocket. Well, right. <laughs> and it it was really neat to listen to you know the year class. So right now they're saying the fish that are being caught are from the twenty. Did he say twenty thirteen year Something class? Something like that, yeah. And it was it was even more interesting to me is because the females obviously they grow faster and in, in good conditions, but like most of the males that we thought were from that year class were only about fifteen inches, fourteen to fifteen in that stretch. Okay. We're all the females were easily eighteen to twenty. Hmm. Yeah. Easily eighteen to twenty. <clears throat> yep. And there and there was quite a few fish that are already had spawned out. So it's gonna happen fast. If the weather wouldn't get crappy like it's supposed to, that you know, there's gonna be a big there could be a big flux of fish coming down the river. How but how long from the time the fish is shocked does it regain its head and just go? I mean, uh, it was pretty quick. I mean, if you watched the water when you did miss a fish, I mean, you're going uh, like one and a half knots or whatever. So you roll over it, shocks it, comes up, you miss it, swims away. Boom, swims it's away. I mean, you've got all of maybe 10 seconds. And, and these guys are so good. At, they got the current dialed perfectly. Because when we first started going, um, one of the guys was saying, he's like, hey, I think you don't have it up high enough because there's fish getting, you know, getting through it. And we yeah. were in a little deeper water. So the booms can cover 20 foot out. And then four foot and less. And I was surprised how many fish were in, you know, two feet of water. Right. 
and they literally were buried in the grass. Yeah, that was that was the craziest part of seeing those literally buried under the grass. You don't see a fish, and then you hit that pod, and then boom, boom, five boom. of them come up out of the grass. Just nope. Yep. Fisherman's dream. Yeah, right. Right. But but to the exact point, there was a couple of times where you chalk them, you'd miss them, and the next thing you know, they're swimming away. Or as soon as that fish hits the aerated tank that's in the boat, they're swimming. Well, yep. I got to say, you're in shallow water, so if you're not moving fast enough, the fish are going to move out of your way, essentially, and you're not yep. going to shock anything. Yep. So, yeah, you guys have to be definitely spot on and quick to right to get the job done efficiently it was it was fun but either way i just wanted to say no fish were harmed in the making of their video that's about to be released this week yeah so that's that's too bad the sensitive world we live in sometimes but yeah so all in all justin thanks for sitting in again you know with brian not being here (laughs) i think he's trying to get out of these shows yeah he's he's the best best master he should uh He's definitely more up and on. Um, Speaking of Bass Masters, we got Dan coming in from Get Bit Baits on Thursday. You want to sit on that one too? Absolutely. <laughs> let's let's. So we're gonna continue the bass talk because there's so many bass junkies around here. Dan's coming in. He's the owner of Get Bit Baits. He's gonna be in here talking about his awesome tubes and other plastics that we carry. Yep, we got all kinds of his uh, tubes, hypertail grub. And we, got fu- hooks, we got a full of jig hooks. Yep, jig hooks. So. So he'll be in here hooting and hollering all about get bit plastics, and then, um, man, what else we got? We got some cool stuff coming up the rest of the time in April. We got the elite uh, rep coming in towards the end of the month. We got some, you know, more video segments coming at everybody. So, Zach, we got an Omega Tackle. Is that still going on yet? That yeah, giveaway? we've got a couple of days left on that. So right at trsoutdoors.com forward that's, slash you can giveaways. Get something like this for the Rapture. Yeah, that's the uh, Rapture. That's yeah. Omega Swim Jig. We brought in uh, their Genesis Spinnerbait too. I mean, this has got a monster Colorado on it. You want some thump? You want to move some water? That's a pretty cool product. Uh, it's a neat spinnerbait. Um, we have so much stuff in here, guys. It is just full of bass <laughs> tackle. Literally, it is. We have. Uh, 32 feet of specialty jigs. Just uh, we brought some. Of the, I brought some of the stuff in here with the wa- on the walleye segment. The kite. Uh, just oh yeah. It, it man. So it, that if you can't catch bass on the tackle, we have time to switch species. I would uh, think. And right. I mean, and a lot of this stuff is on the website. So make sure you. And we got some turkey sales going on right turkey now on sales, the website. Yep. There's some secret things in the turkey sales. So click on that. You might find a. An awesome deal on certain uh, certain We got an in-store special on a sweet turkey vest. We got in-store specials, baby. So Cheap, cheap, and an amazing vest. Chirp, chirp, chirp. chirp. An amazing vest, and we got decoys. I mean, we're fully stocked right now. Blinds. Blinds. We got ammunition. We got shotguns. We got Steve and Mark telling you the best products you could possibly want for shooting turkeys in the face with a a gun. Plus, we have the bow accessories to go along with it. Ground blinds from Zenic, Double Bowl, um, Baronet, NAP, NAP, all that kind of stuff. When we had Keith Beam in. So, dudes and dudettes, if you haven't been to the real shot recently, please come and say hi. We've listened. You've asked. We've listened. We we you know we we loaded it up. So, yep, that's the new slogan right there. We lo- you asked. We d- we and did. We, we can't do that. No, that's what? Bertram's now. Is it part of it? Yeah. Oh God. Yep, we can't do. What that. What if we just add wah, be wah. safe in there somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> Is that? Can we get so some be safe up in there? No, but we could write a two-page long thing for all of our salespeople to remember if we want to. Mm. Every time someone walks in the door, we want to get you the best tackle at the best price. Zach's, Zach's going. <laughs> Zach's True story. Oh, man, I'm getting flashbacks. Yeah, he's, going, all right. he's going to Don't go fight. down that road. Don't go, I'm over. Don't. <laughs> so, anyways, that's that's pretty much what we got today. Just wanted to catch up with TJ. It's been a while. That dude's a really cool guy, so we always appreciate him coming on here, and I'm sure that uh, he's going to have a good rest of the tournament down there in Tennessee while we're getting snow up here. So, you know, be safe on that one. But yeah. other, than, other than that, we got some uh, – what do we got tomorrow? Tomorrow is – is tomorrow Wednesday Tomorrow's only? Wednesday. I'm going to be working on our walleye video most of the day. Hump day. <laughs> Hump day. You guys fishing at all this week? Weekend? I'm fishing right now. Mm. Yeah, definitely. If I'm not here, <laughs> right after work, fishing for a fishing. compliment or something. Yeah. What do you got going on? No, I'm fishing. I'm fishing after work again. At least four to six. Zach's got a pound it every weekend. I got a two you have hour. To. Can't catch him from your couch. Are you sure? Because I feel like you've <laughs> caught him from your <laughs> couch. Just a kid. Just uh, a kid. I don't know. You're only as good as your spot, right? So you got to protect a little bit of stuff. Oh yeah. So I see we got a fillet knife and a board in here. I did. I I was teasing Brian on the way through. I'm like, you know, since uh, you know, I'm taking over uh, uh, the podcast today. I thought I was going to discuss uh, 
some other uh, products you may need for bass fishing. So I brought this nice <laughs> fillet board <laughs> and this nine-inch spoon fillet, which actually is made for salmon. Uh, the spoon is to take out the. <laughs> Are you trying to make enemies, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just check, I just like to mess with people. So I was gonna say we need to get uh, a little bit bigger board, you know, for the muskies, especially <laughs> the ones over forty-six <laughs> inches right, or so. Right. <laughs> and that goes back to the species-specific <laughs> right. uh, sensitivity training. Well, that <laughs> we might have to put into play. Speaking of that, speaking of that big knife you need for salmon, we have that awesome buyer's guide or the handbook that's out there right now. That's on the website, yep. in store, all that kind of stuff. So if you haven't got your hands on that. And we're in the process of making more of those, not just salmon. We're doing a fall hunting one. We're actually going to do a photo shoot next week. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? <laughs> nope. Next week, Wednesday. <laughs> Are you coming? No, you're in it. No, you're, you're the model. Everybody wants. You're to the see, model. Everybody wants to see Jay Munt on the on the, s- the big screen. So, mm, how about so there's yeah. we have some other cool stuff in process. We have Megan does a phenomenal job with that kind of stuff. She did a great job with Russell's. Uh, Russell and Megan combined made that awesome salmon trout handbook. So we're gonna expand it. We're going we're going into whitetail archery and gun. Then we're gonna roll into ice fishing, and then 2020 is gonna release a whole pile of handbooks or catalogs whatever you want to see so hot new hot all new right. products that's, and that's what's highlighted in cool in, in, cool cool well, all right let's wrap it up it's lunchtime so thanks everybody that joining us again thanks tj for taking the time from your busy schedule to chi- or skype in chime in whatever you want to say <laughs> so we'll see everybody in here thursday with dan elsner from get bit baits and of course just be safe with all the snow coming up and we'll see you next time see you next time see you